go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthias was success. Matthew, Matthew 6 verse. Verse 25. I tell you, he says, stop being. <laughs> I've read this so many times. But it repeat, repeats this, this passage, this sentence, Jesus repeats several times in this, in this passage. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, I tell you, Stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life. Okay? What you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body. What you eat, what you're going to drink. Look at the birds of the air, verse 26. They don't sow nor reap nor gather into your barns, yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. This is awesome. I want to set you free today. I had a, I had a, a meeting with a friend of mine from, a, from another church who was really struggling with um, tithing. And he's in a position financially where he, where he can't afford to tithe. I don't know how many of you guys have been there before. And uh, then they quote from Malachi saying that if you don't tithe, God is going to curse you. You know, so I think it's terrible. Jesus comes... And he says, look at, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap. See what it says. And he says, your father keeps feeding them. My goodness, if God is faithful to the birds, he's going to be faithful to his children. He's not going to curse his children. I want you to be completely free in, in your life as a Christian. When things are wrong and, and going wrong, God is not behind it. You must please remember that, you know. When I give, I give because God is a giver. And when I give, it is because it is the nature of my Father to give. He gives. He gave His Son. He gave. He gave. So if God looks after the birds. Remember when I was, a, I've got a spot at the house that I pray, but when I was very, very small, maybe about 10 years old, I was looking at the, the birds flying and I said, yes, I wish I could just be a bird. And then the scripture, I was reading the Bible that night, and then this one popped up. You're, you're much more than they. That's, that's just for me. Okay, so anyway. Yeah, be free. Be free, be free, be free. So it says, um, where were we? Look at the birds of the air. Are you not much more worth than they are? Who of you, by worrying and being anxious, can add one unit of measure to his statue, stature or span of his life. So for all of you guys who are constantly worried about how short you are, it's not going <laughs> to... Jesus says it's not going to help <laughs> through worry. Monet? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> all right. Um... Why be anxious about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field. Learn thoroughly how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his magnific magnificence was not arrayed like one of these. If God clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and green tomorrow is tossed in the furnace, will he not more surely clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, listen again. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying. Alright? Check the King James Version. Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or, or with what shall we be clothed? Okay, so it's, it's, it's speaking to people like that get... We all get there, get, can get into a state of anxiousness, you know. And um, he's saying, stop saying, what are we going to eat? Okay, so what is the thought? The thought is, I'm in big trouble. 
<laughs> the thought is, I'm not going to make it. The thought is, I don't know how I'm going to pay this. Stop saying it. Now, the thing is, the thought is going to come. Remember, the thoughts come. The thoughts come. They're going to come. They come to everybody. But the thoughts, um, it's like there's a saying that says, they, they come like, you know, ships. You don't need to harbor the, the ships. You can just let it go, you know. Um, the, for example, uh, we, we brought this up. This is a good example. Don't think about a pink elephant. Stop thinking about a pink elephant. Stop it. Don't, don't see the pink ears and the, the big pink feet. Stop thinking about it. So the more I'm saying don't think about it, the more you're thinking about it. Right, so you have to... So whatever thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Oh no. You know, the point is you have to allow a thought to go. So sometimes when the thoughts come, I acknowledge, okay, here comes a negative thought. I'm not going to say what this thought says. It's just going to go in and it is going to go out and I'm going to let it go. So the Bible says, um, ach, this, there's a saying that says, birds are going to fly over your head, but you don't need to let them make a nest in your hair. Right. So Jesus says, take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. So I remember Joshua chapter 1. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. First time I read that, how do you understand that? Lord, how do I make sense of that? Every time Joshua speaks, must he say, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> you can't say, I'm hungry. Or you can't say, hey, how are you? No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, don't say something that is contrary, that is contradictory to this, to this, you know, this word and these orders from God. So, what Jesus is saying, when you worry, take no thought. Saying, don't be anxious, but don't, don't let a contrary word come out of your mouth. It's going to be all right. I think it's one of the best words. Sometimes when someone just claps you on the back, hey man, it's going to be okay. You're going to be, you're going to be fine. Good news to everybody. 90% of the things that I've worried about, even more, didn't come to pass. So today, don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> it's a good word. Amen. Worrying is like a rocking chair, they say. It gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. All right? Don't worry. Muni worry ni. Okay? Don't worry. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Now, on Friday, I've been speaking about, even with the youth, um, the mind of Christ. Sunday, remember, we spoke about the mind of Christ. I think you have negative thinking then you have positive thinking positive thinking is better than negative thinking the mind of christ however supersedes positive thinking <laughs> it's outrageous it's crazy think about your meditation the heart and how important it is think about I, i'm going to use this um, one time I went like cliff diving and it was quite high and now when you're about to go and jump everything that could go wrong runs through your mind <laughs> you see how you hit your head on one of the cliffs you you see how this goes bad and how that goes bad what about when you when sometimes when some of your children travel and you think okay what could go wrong you know or some family or what are all the things that worry in your mind that go here and there and there? Do you understand what I'm thinking? How many of you guys, when you think about someone's coming to visit you and they haven't phoned you <laughs> and you haven't heard from them and you're thinking all the stuff that could have gone wrong. But Jesus says, take no thought. Take no thought. Saying, saying, you know. Perfect peace. So let's go to John. John chapter, uh, is it 14? He says in verse 1, Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your hearts be troubled.
troubled. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. If you go to, to chapter 16 and verse 33, I've told you these things so that you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the, in the world, you, you, you'll have tribulation and trials, distress <laughs> and frustration. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Everyone can relate to tribulation. And what else does it say? Trials, distress, frustration. But how many of you can relate to being of good cheer? And being in of God's peace in the midst of tribulation and trials. I, lo- I love, keep your fingers there and go to Romans 8. Verse 31. What then shall we to say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold or spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? When it's God who justifies, who shall come forward and accuse and impeach those whom God has chosen? Okay, if you don't know, he's speaking about you. Who is there to condemn us? Will Christ Jesus, who is at the right hand, actually interceding for us? Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering, affliction and tribulation, calamity and distress or persecution or hunger, destitution, sword? Verse 37, yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors. In the midst of all these things, it's like we sang it this morning. In the midst of all these things. You're standing in the midst of all these things. God said there's going to be distresses, there's going to be trials, there's going to be tribulations. It's going to come, but He's saying it doesn't change your position in Christ Jesus. It doesn't change the love that He has for you. It doesn't change it at all. Don't worry. Be at peace. Come on, man. I want to be at peace. I want to be at peace. So go back to John don't let your hearts be troubled. And in chapter 16, I've told you these things so that you may have perfect peace. You can have perfect peace. Perfect peace. Perfect peace. All right. This is going to be good. All right. So, perfect peace. All right. So, here we have... Um, Let's draw it like that. Uh, Okay. (laughs) All right. If you don't know what that is, don't worry now. When God created us, if you read Genesis chapter 2, He he took, you must know, He took clay or sand or dirt and he, He formed man from the dust. And then so the, he, he had a body. He had a body. And then it says that God breathed life. Or it says the spirit in. Okay, remember? It's the spirit. And when these two came together, it says man stood up a living soul. Really, remember So, we're made up of three. We've got a body, we've got spirit, we've got soul. So, I'm made up of of three, of three. So, for example, um, Lukona, can you, can you, can I borrow you? Come here. All right, Lukona. 
How many guys know Lukona? Okay, Seth and Bongi and Shasha know Lukona. Okay, so the rest of you don't know Lukona. Well, what do you know about him? What do you see about him? You see this. But you don't know this yet. You don't know the soul. You know, soul is so valuable. If, if I was to set up for the single people and I set up a date and I showed you a picture of a person and I said, do you like this person? You'll say, well, it looks pretty, looks nice. But if I say, okay, well, let's, let's get you married then. You won't because <laughs> you need to know the soul. You need to see the soul. Remember, the soul is important. So now you have... So, there's your body, and if you have breath, you breathe, you become a living soul. So, inside is the person, and out of his eyes, his, his eyes are windows. Remember the, the problem. So, he's looking, he looks all around, and he sees, but he's, it's like his soul is peeping through the windows, and he can see so in reality, Lukona is, is a soul. He's a soul. That's the person he is. Right? Okay, thank you. You can, you, can go, you can go sit down. Now the soul is... Remember what all is that helped me? Your mind. I'm going to say your character. If you don't know, I'm actually, by trade, should be a doctor. That's why you can't read. Me too. Eh? Me too. Character. I think it's your conscience. Uh-uh. Conscience is your soul. Emotions. Everything is, everything is here. Okay. Come on, show you. Remember we did this before. We're going to do it again. Close your eyes. Don't sleep. All right. So, when your eyes are closed, feel the temperature in the room. Feel what's happening. Listen to my voice. Um, what else is happening? Um, there's people around you. Uh, what is it, like 23, 24 degrees? I don't know. Um, you can feel what's going on. If you, you can hear birds in the background, you can hear. Now, now I want you to shift your thinking to to one of the to a happy day. Think about the funniest person that you know. The guy that made you laugh till you till you cried. Remember that moment when your jaws were in pain, your when you, you developed the six pack from laughter or <laughs> whatever it was. Think about it. All right, so open your eyes. In that moment, did you see that, that you shift, shifted consciousness from, from body to soul? I don't know if you pick up. While you were thinking about what was happening in the room, you could feel the temperature. You could hear my voice. When you went and thought about a happy time in your life, you lost awareness of what was happening in the room. Do you hear what I'm saying? You lost, you could feel it, it was different. I went back and I was actually there. And I didn't think about how hot it was and who was around me. I, I didn't think about that. This is a powerful, this is what I'm trying to tell you about. How you have got the ability to choose what's happening. To choose what you take into your soul or into your heart. And you, and you get to... Um, um, you get depicting. So let's stay in, in the context of what I'm talking about. And I'm going to try and show you how to make this really practical. So go to Philippians. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. I, uh, the, the day we, we graduated Bible school, you know the story. Um, Anya's parents gave Anya a car for a just to congratulate her and say, well, well done, you're a big girl now. And she got a boyfriend and I rolled it. <laughs> and I crashed it. So anyways, but what was, what was bad, it wasn't my fault. Anyway. 
So what was, what was interesting is about the recovery after being in a car accident. How many guys have like, like survived the car accident and then you are getting back into the car. I was so dangerous on the road after that because I was just thinking what could go wrong the whole time. And it's amazing. While I'm thinking what could go wrong, I will look left and right, left and right. The road will seem clear and I would go and here comes cars. It's like, where did they come from? But because I'm in this mode of panic, it just seems like I become the most dangerous person on the road. All right. So why? Anxiety is driving. Fear is driving. Um, and this is what, what Jesus is speaking about. So if you go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. We were in the men's meeting and one of the guys said, Yes, Bruce, more does not mark like me. <laughs> and I agree, you know, sometimes it's not. But it's a lot easier on the body to have peace <laughs> than what it is to have anxiety. Maybe it's not so easy to not have anxiousness. But to have peace is a lot easier and is a lot better. Don't fret about or have anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance, by prayer and petition, continue to make your wants known to God with thanksgiving. And he says, and God's peace, God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation. So listen how cool this is. This is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, okay. All right. So, don't, what does he say? Don't worry. I want you to snap this. This is good. Don't worry. No, don't be anxious. Okay. Don't fret. Okay. Then he says, Thanksgiving. Be thankful. Um, what else does it say? He says, if you don't worry, don't fret, be thankful, make your wants, I would say your needs known to God. If you apply this, if you apply this, what does he say? God's peace. Wow. God's peace shall be yours. God's peace. So you'll have God's peace. This is beautiful. You're going to enjoy this. Which transcends all understanding. It says will do what? It will guard your hearts. It will mount a guard over your heart. What could go wrong? <laughs> oh goodness, I'm living in tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? No. If you, if you stay in a position of thankfulness, of trust, making your wants known to God, He guards your heart. It's beautiful. So check this out. Next one says, For the rest, brethren, what is true? Whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, you know this, hear it again, and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, Whatever is kind and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on, weigh and take account of these things. Listen, practice what you have learned and, and heard and seen in me. And then he says, and the God <laughs> of peace will be with you. How awesome is that? Yeah, don't worry. Be thankful. God's peace will be with you and it will guard, guard, uh, guard your heart. Then he says, hey, get your meditation right. Whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is practice these things. And it says, and not God's peace, the God of peace <laughs> will be with you. 
wow, I want the God of peace to be with me. Amen. All right, come, I need uh, Lukona and Bongi. Come, come to the front. And just, Bongi, good. Let me just see you else I can use. Seth, can I use you? Thank you. All right, so, all right. Thank you, Seth. Okay, so yeah, we have uh, Bongi. Say hello, Bongi. Hello, everybody. Seth and Lukon. Now, yeah, we have the the body, and yeah, we have the soul, and yeah, we have the spirit. Okay. Now, if I'm looking at it, that that's you. That represents you. We are used to living and, and allowing our lives to be dictated by what's happening here. If, if, I am, if I've got a headache, my soul goes down. Because my soul goes down, my spirit goes down. If I need to, if I, if I need to go exercise, I don't feel like it. So my soul listens to my body and my spirit goes down. Okay? It's interesting that we, we kind of programmed to work this way. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? I speak to your soul. You can be in, in 10 years from now, you can be a multimillionaire, but you've got to do this and this for the next couple of days. So, wow, that's awesome. I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right? Do, do you understand? So, so now, so God's Word, all right, let, let's just stay there because I'm going to use you guys the whole time. Colossians chapter 3, verse 9. Quickly read it. Colossians 3, verse 9. Don't lie to one another, all right? Good. Stop lying, everyone. And then <laughs> you have stripped off the old self with its evil practices. Okay? And then it says, and you've clothed yourself with the new, which is being renewed into the knowledge of Christ. Now, um, I've, if... Before, when, when we are born, because of the nature of man and what fell, because of Adam eating the mango, remember, we lost consciousness of this reality. It's still there, but we only understand soul and, and body. Now, now Christ comes, and we get, we get awakened here in the Spirit. Okay? Come on, guys. Help me preach. Help me preach. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Where did we become new? Where did we become new? Because when I gave my life to Jesus, I looked the same. I didn't lose weight. I didn't gain weight. I didn't anti-age. Everything stayed the same. Everything stayed the same. So where do I become a new creation? In spirit. In spirit. Now the Bible says, my soul must get refreshed. Okay. So, so in reality, when you look at Bongi, when we first see him, we see, okay, that's who he is, that's what he looks like. Until we get to know him. And then this is him. But in reality, now in Christ Jesus, this is who you are. All right? You're a spirit man. You're a spirit man. You're not a soul man. Come on. And your spirit, your soul, needs to start listening to your spirit. So God comes and He's turning this thing around. Okay? And you have spirit, then soul, then body. Okay? So now when I'm looking at... Bongi, I'm looking at Christ. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, there's Bongi, but it's yeah. Seth now. But I'm looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at Christ. 
and we need to begin, this is the practical side of things. I can't control my thoughts unless I know who I am. If I don't know who I am, if I don't know that I'm higher than the thoughts that's coming to my soul via my body, I can't control what's going on. If, if I think that the stuff that's coming to my body is me, then I'm missing it. But if I know that where I am in Christ Jesus, I have to put that onto my soul, and my soul is going to deal with what's happening in my body. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I'm down, when my body is down, my soul says, come body, listen to me. When my soul is down, like David said, my soul will rejoice. Come on soul, you're going to rejoice. And your spirit in Christ Jesus is fixed. Does this help you? Does this help? So thank you, Bongi, you can go. All right. Okay. Don't worry. Paul says, don't be anxious, don't fret, be thankful, make your wants known to God. Everything, everything that, that, that he says, you, you become co-heirs with Christ Jesus, everything is yours already. So when my body is down, and believe me, it gets down, I start saying, body, because I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, because of who I am in Christ Jesus, you are new. You are being made new. And I speak to my body. I don't allow my body to speak to me. I don't allow my body to dictate how my soul feels. I allow my spirit. Spirit, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. I'm not going to be an anxious driver. So take no thought. Come on, come on. So I hope, I hope that, this, that this is helping you. So let's just read that again, and then we can hit the finish line. Philippians. Uh, God's peace shall be yours. Whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, is honorable whatever is just whatever is lovely and lovable whatever is kind if there is any virtue in excellence if there is anything worthy of praise think on them weigh and take account of these things so how do I think I need to meditate but my meditation must change how I speak. I can't do this. Some of the worst things you can say about yourselves is to say, stupid. You stupid. Why do you do that? Don't say stuff like that. Do you know that time when you, when you kick your toe on the corner of the bed or something like that and you, you break it or whatever and the first word that comes out of your mouth Oh, and everyone looks at you and say, where did that come from? And you say, it just slipped out of my mouth. It slipped out of your mouth because it was in your heart. <laughs> right? What difference will it make if instead of cursing and cussing, if you say, oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> Lord, you are good. <laughs> and your mercy is endure forever. What difference is it going to make? Why do you have to curse? Why do you have to say something negative? Why do you have to break yourself down the whole time? Why don't you shift it and say things of whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is of, of virtue, whatever is, and, and be that, um, you, you know, let, let the pure things come out of your mouth. All right? And that, that means that you become good at selecting your thoughts. And that you are not just a victim of what comes in there. It's important as Christians that we... I think the first place that it's got to happen is in, in your meditation. Apply it. Apply it. Apply it. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Quickly go to Romans 8 and then we, we finish up. Quite interesting 
this is just to explain when Jesus died on the cross before he died what did he say it is finished but he also said father into your hands I commit my spirit so cool so so you remember nobody killed Jesus Jesus had to yeah Jesus let go they could keep on and keep on Jesus wouldn't die until he gave up his spirit and so where did the spirit go to the to the father then if you read in Acts 2 it says that his soul went to hell and it's and it's repeated in Peter that he says he went to preach to the the disobedient in the days of Noah he went and he appeared it says the psalmist says you will not leave my soul in Hades in Acts 2 it actually says that so Jesus spirit went to the father the soul went to Hades or whatever you call it and the body went to the grave so so interesting how how the man is is divided but everything is is you so Romans 8 thank you Jesus we will finish here so stick with me finish strong <laughs> All right, we can start from verse, verse 6. The mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is peace. Wow. The mind of the spirit is life and peace. The manifestation of the mind of the spirit is peace. You know, the mind of the spirit is peace. Thank you, Jesus. Um, because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit. It can't. So then those who are living the life of the flesh cannot please God or be acceptable to Him. Okay, But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit. If the Spirit of God dwells within you. Verse 13. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. Okay, But if through the power of the Spirit, you are putting to death the deeds prompted by the body, you shall live forever. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. The spirit you have now received is not a spirit of slavery, but you have received the spirit of adoption, which cries out, Father. Think about that. Think about that. So, um, all of us, the, the challenge in Christianity is like you saw Bongi's first. When we look at ourselves, we, we see, if I look in the mirror, I see myself. You know, I see who I am and I say okay that's Bruce but in Christ Jesus I made new so the reality the life that I live is not Bruce the guy in the mirror it's it's, it's the guy in this mirror <laughs> right so when I look in here and you and you look it's like wow I'm seeing Jesus I'm seeing Christ that's who you really are and um, you're still unique I'm not saying God doesn't get rid of of Bruce Bruce is still son of God but Christ over him you know this is the encouraging thing you are living the life of the Spirit you have to acknowledge that it doesn't say that you aren't and he doesn't say that you must start living the life of the Spirit you are living the life Christ is already living his life in you Galatians is a 2 verse 20 21 he's no longer I that live but it is Christ who is alive who's living in me and the life I live now I live not to the flesh but by the faith of the Son of God I love it I love it all right this is applicable apply it this is helpful it works next time oh I'm anxious stop saying it stop saying it take no thought saying if you feel anxious then you let anxiety go and you start thinking good things 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Okay, in closing, what does the word personality mean? Personality comes from the Greek word persona, which means mask. You just put it on. You just put it on. Today, a lot of us have got our church masks on. <laughs> church faces on all right it's a mask it's a personality it's not it's not real it's not real you can be anything you want to you go out to strangers today you can be a different person you choose what person you want to be instead of putting on a personality put on Christ wear Christ put it on you wear him how do you wear him get his thoughts put it in your head when you say stuff, say Christ's words. Amen? That's, that's, that's very important. Amen. 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 That's why when you go to parents' meeting and your, the teacher says, yes, your child is a problem. He's got a different mask on at school. To the mask he has at home. They put on Christ. Okay. Guys, I want to speak this over you. You're a peculiar people. You are the bride of Christ. <laughs> you are washed in the blood. You are brand new. You are a city that is set on a hill. The Bible says that you are the head and you are not the tail. You are above and you are not beneath. You are higher. You are more than what you think about yourself right now. You are a lot more. Alright? If you want to know what you look like, look into Jesus. <laughs> because it changes you changes you changes you thank you father so let me pray for all of you thank you jesus right now for for, for the words of life that come that wash us that give us an inheritance that build us up that shake off the dirty rags and the re religious thinking and the the robbing thinking the robbing mentalities and you give us an um, you speak words, you wash us, and you make us pure, and you make us the righteousness of God. The peace of God guards our hearts, Father. I speak peace, not the world's peace. The peace of Christ to rule and reign in each one's heart, to act as an umpire in their hearts, um, giving guidance on what to do. Soul peace. Peace in the soul. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Jesus. All right. No more cycles. In Jesus' name. No more cycles. Um, this, this week I woke up with a word. By, by this time next year. <laughs> I'm not saying we must be next, next year. I'm saying by this time next year, you won't be in the same cycle. <laughs> You'll be out of it. You'll be, you'll be with you. And I was thinking of that scripture where they were prophesying a child. And um, that breakthrough in your life. What, you, what you're waiting for. It's time. It's time. Amen. Time for the church to come out the closet and shine. In Jesus' name. Amen.